Hello, this is Abraham. What we got here is a uh, Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, brand new. We're going to do a few things to it. We're going to open it up and then we're going to open it up again and we're going to take a look what type of hard drive this one uses, whether it's an onboard or actually um, like an M1, M2 an SSD that's plugged in. Uh, this is very important for a business laptop as I have discovered a lot of laptops today do not have removable hard drives. So let's see how this is gonna look inside. Alright, got my camera in the tripod. Get the seal broken. The smell of new. Let's put this like that. So we have a backdrop of X1. A box with power supply. And this is a USB-C power supply. Very nice. Get the cord plugged in. Ah. Ah. A box within a box. Nice. I guess you could just gift it like this and not even give the power supply. Just here. Got X1 for you. We are going to open it in an interesting fashion. Gonna cut it up like that. Cut it like that. Cut it like that. Move the flap. Come on. More plastic. Apple really got everybody into packaging nicely. This was all Apple's idea, creating this kind of beautiful packaging. This is a business laptop. Come on. It doesn't need that. Stick it in a box. Give it to me. It has to be rugged. It has to be simple. Business people simple. <clears throat> oh, takes me an hour to open it up. I'm not being negative here, just trying to get this thing out of there is a bigger chore than I want it to be. Imagine companies open or oh, buy thousands of the well not thousands well I'm working with a company that has 30 of them or I'm sorry not them computers and you get 30 of them and opening it up and that just slows you down so for a business environment that's not needed all right beautiful beautiful very light let me go get a scale Got my trusty scale here. Let's see how much this thing is going to push. Two and a half pounds. Okay, that's not bad. Let's compare it to a Mac. I don't have any MacBook Airs, but. I guess this won't be a totally uh, fair comparison. Mac is a little bigger. Uh, a little over, over four and a half, so almost double the weight. Let's see. 
what can we compare it to? All right, don't have any MacBook Airs, but I do have a MacBook Pro. This is a 13 inch uh, Retina. This would be a comparable size. So three and a half pounds, a whole pound heavier. All right. Yep, about the same size. Six pounds total for both. So this one is two and a half, noticeably lighter, and three and a half. Yep, six total. All right, weight out of the way. Uh, this is Windows 10. There is nothing unusual about the Windows. So I'm not even going to power it up. That's not what I'm after here. I like, I actually love these keys. This is what really attracted me. I felt they really have that old stuck school feel where when you push them, they actually give you this nice click feedback. The keyboard is absolutely perfect. This one does have uh, a button under a trackpad. It also gives you this kind of uh, old style, I don't know what you call this, the stick, st sticky thing, moves the mouse on the screen also. Not a big fan of this, but if this doesn't work, you can always use that so you get two it's duplication that's good um, <clears throat> you get three buttons don't know what the third one is uh, but they feel they feel nice yeah I do like the Apple taptic uh, where you anywhere you click it does feedback for you this one does not click here does not click here so you start clicking over here but in reality it's got two buttons and I honestly think that they should have two physical buttons this one has on top so that's good you have two buttons but you also have two buttons and you can probably control that inside another nice feature that I like is that you can close your webcam get a little red dot over there I don't know what that is probably some kind of sensor that I don't like it don't like it because if you stick a webcam in there and I don't know what's behind it and it doesn't close it, can I? Whatever. Anyway, this is the webcam. I don't know what that is. Probably a sensor. I do like that it's uh, not a shiny screen, the matte screen, and it does not reflect anything. Really nice. So, excellent keyboard, excellent weight. Um, let's see. What I'm doing here is checking how the weight of, or I should say resistance of the hinges is spread throughout the case. And uh, it's a new laptop, they're all good. But what you wanna look for is how much this bends, okay? It doesn't really have any bend, so it's good hinges. But again, this is a brand new laptop and all laptops that are new have good hinges. All right, I like that they got the power button on the side and there is a reason for why I like it now. I don't like it if I'm working on a laptop and this one does not have super sticky feet, so that's good. But if I wanna move it, there is a button in here and I, you know, I just take my hands and move it and I push that freaking button and it turns off the laptop. I don't like that. But I found a reason to like it. And the reason is, if we're going to be using a docking station with this computer, uh, the docking station that runs over the USB-C has a power button, but that power button does not necessarily power up or down the computer. So you can turn off the actual docking station, but it does not always, the one particular that I'm working on, with um, does not send the signal to a computer to go to sleep or turn off. <clears throat> 
and I'm not really fond of that. So basically, uh, you're working with a docking station, you have to open the computer, push the button to turn it on, then to close it, goes to sleep, the docking station goes to sleep, so it's eh, awkward. But having a button on the side is really nice. So you want to turn it on, you push the button on the computer and it turns on the docking station. But it would be nice if the docking station power button would actually send a signal to a computer to either go to sleep or to um, uh, shut it off. At any rate, that's beside the point. Let me do this. We are going to take it apart. First things first, it is Phillips screws. Beautiful. No complications, just regular Phillips. We're going to take our Phillips screwdriver and <clears throat> we're going to open it up. We're going to open it up before we actually turn it on. How about that? I don't think too many people do that. People want to turn on their computers ASAP. Now one thing that I see right away that I absolutely love is I'm pulling the screws out and the case separates right away. I don't have to use, well I don't know yet, but it doesn't look like I would have to use case opener tools or any kind of other things. Um, I just did a video about the Dell and that one I had to open it uh, and I had to fight it to open it. So I think I spoke too soon, but let's see because those didn't pop up. At least the back popped up. Ah, easy peasy. All right. Uh, the IBM or Lenovo or whoever is uh, controlling the design of this project and I have been at Lenovo's gathering and I talked to them, the Lenovo ThinkPad people, and what they told me was that IBM has almost complete control over design of the ThinkPad brand products. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I heard. Beautiful. Uh, pull the screws out. What I'm not really uh, fond of is when I had to pull these screws out, they came out. They have a little holder in there. They came out of their holder, um, <coughs> but didn't, didn't get lost. So that's big, big plus. Uh, screws get lost all the time. My floor in the office is uh, patchwork of gray, black, and more gray. And screws are black or gray and they get lost all the time <clears throat> first look on the inside um, beautiful battery meaning screws to pull it out okay so you just pull out one two three four five six screws maybe one more and just disconnect it there isn't uh, much to it very very nice uh, I mean no glue here that I can see and looks like the little peaking thingy over here is our hard drive how about that they use a um, looks like yeah it's a M2 uh, PCI Express hard drive now this PCI Express business got me all confused and the reason that I confused is there are two different types of hard drives PCI Express and SATA and they look the same oh come on this is too nice there's a little uh, thermal um, sticker here to cool off the hard drive a little bit help with anything that they can uh, let me see so big big plus for this machine the removable hard drive I can work with this even if it's a crazy PCI Express uh, can still get the data off of them for whatever reason 
other manufacturers do not put these in. Or if they do, they hide them so much that we can't find them. Um, let's see. This is some kind of switches, M1, M2, or M1-2. I don't know if the switches are not. M1-1, M1-2. They look like antennas for the Wi-Fi, but why do they have switches on them? Or maybe they just look like, like switches. Don't know what those little sliders are. They don't really slide. Okay, a uh, little fan. That's good. Speakers. Uh, very simple construction, very easy to service, very, very businesslike. Um, I like it. This is this is a very good uh, uh, setup. Um, does not have memory slot. That's kind of disappointing, but I'm not too worried about memory. This one, I think, has 16 gigabytes. That should be plenty for long term. Uh, four gigabytes today is enough to run the computer fine. 16 is an overkill. Um, so it would be four for basic operations, eight for more advanced graphics operations, and 16 is overkill. You can do almost anything with it. The only reason why you would want uh, RAM memory to be 32, 64, 100 gigabytes is if you do movie editing and you want your whole movie to fit, you know, when you do stuff with it, that's that's beneficial. Or if you do other graphics stuff, uh, this computer is going to be for standard business operations, uh, you know, Word, Excel, Office applications, uh, maybe QuickBooks, you know, things like that. They do not need a lot of RAM, so even four gigabytes would have been fine for this, but 16 is great. So the fact that it's not upgradable, by the time computers would require more, which I don't think is coming, looks like uh, the industry is scaling back. Uh, let's see what the size, I think this is supposed to be 500. Yep, 512 gigabyte hard drive. Um, industry right now seems to me works towards, holy cow, Wow, I just noticed there is another slot here, and I think this is a SATA slot. <clears throat> this one, yeah, wow. Uh, so I, as, as I was saying about the industry, uh, um, taking a hard look at the amount of data that computers saved and uh, Apple right now sells most of their computers with 128 gigabyte hard drives. I mean, it's laughable, that's not enough, not enough. I would say 240 is the minimum. Um, but uh, as I said, uh, the software manufacturers are slimming down their software, the, everything is getting slimmed down. So if you deal with a lot of pictures, then you need a lot of space. But in general, uh, this is fine, this is good. Um, the fact that it doesn't have the memory that can be upgraded the negative about it is if your memory goes bad and then you know you can just pull out the chip with different one and this one is on board um hopefully they're using better type memory so it doesn't go bad as often but at any rate let's see <clears throat> so what i'm seeing here is um and this is a PCI Express slot right here. So this one has, you can't put this one in because the notch is on the other side. You can't really put it in this way. Yep, it's the wrong number of pins. Let me go get a different thing to put in there. I got this thing and it fits right in. I don't think that slot was intended for another type of hard drive 
for another hard drive in a machine which would be nice and the reason that I'm saying it wasn't intended for it is even though it hit, fits it doesn't really have space for it there's a screw in here so this is for either a smaller I, wow but I really really like this slot this is absolutely perfect let's see what's in here just some components okay well this is good so we got the uh, possibility to put in a different hard drive in here or some expansion even this tiny 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 teeny tiny computer was the manufacturer Lenovo was uh, uh, forth forward-looking enough to have some additional uh, expansion added to the machine just in case somebody like me would buy it and would want to use this I would definitely I will check this out and see what this can do and um, amazing uh, you know I hear stories that come from Apple and whatnot saying you can't this is the smallest it can be and we just don't have any space we don't have space for a phone jack let's see did they find a space for him oh yes there is a phone jack well it's a computer I know it's not a phone moreover this site has a really interesting set of connectors so we have the USB-C and charging port we have another USB-C and charging and it's some kind of bigger one this one has something that looks like a network adapter, regular USB, HDMI. I mean, you could put a small display port adapter or output it through USB-C. Why do you need HDMI? Because some people have TVs that still have HDMI. We're not going to make you buy another adapter and have a million things dangling. We're going to give you a port. Amazing. I absolutely love this machine. Um, this one, if it didn't have it, I wouldn't cry over it. Regular USB, absolute plus. Uh, don't know what this is. I'd have to research what gets plugged in there. I have never seen this one. And I'm not sure why this hole in there. What goes in that hole? It's interesting. Um, <clears throat> this whole port situation here seems like they had space and they just stuck some ports in there and some space was left over i don't think that's the case i want to know what that hole is for if you know put it in the comments i would really appreciate it uh ace generation i7 processor i think this is uh, like 1.5 gigahertz all right this is the side that i'm <laughs> i wish computers came like this and uh this is how i use computers all right i buy it and i open it up like this and i sit on it and i enjoy the view that's me and i'm crazy i know but this is how i use computers this is how I fix them. One more thing I just noticed. There is a little tiny hole over here. There is a little tiny button over here. And this button resets your computer. That's a reset button. And I also see these two holes and these. I'm curious what that's for. I have seen a Lenovo docking station that... Um, <clears throat> and I'm thinking that's what these are for the Lenovo docking station so you put it in and you push a button and it uh, connects to that port so I'm thinking yeah that's what that's what that's for and this one's probably aligning the connector for the docking station and it connects to all that stuff so okay that's what it's for true business machine absolutely love it um, I've had a few ThinkPads and I'll be honest, they were all good. 
there is one thing that I was not happy about uh, ThinkPad, then uh, the ones I had were made by IBM. Um, when I had to replace um, Wi-Fi card and probably a um, Bluetooth card, when I put in just any card, it would say it's not IBM certified, blah, blah, blah. So you could not put non-IBM parts into a ThinkPad computer. And that was uh, a little uh, disconcerting to me. So no big deal. Uh, good computer really really well done machine so hopefully this helps somebody if you have any questions ask them down below if you like the video give me a like subscribe enjoy and save money uh, this was not cheap but with things that it has it's gonna save you money over it's a lot cheaper than this crap